So I want to talk to you about Oblong and about what we do. First, kind of share with you our big, hairy, audacious goal. So our big, hairy, audacious goal is to change the way we all use computers. And we believe that this transformation uh, will happen around the user interface. And that space is key to that transformation. That once you have all the pixels in the room with you, you have the ability uh, to interact with those pixels, and those pixels are interoperable and addressable. As Brady mentioned, that vision was really writ large in a movie, uh, Minority Report, which probably most of you in here have seen if you're into uh, interfaces and computer design. John Intercoffler, our chief scientist, was the science advisor for that movie. And after that movie came out, a group of us got together and decided let's build a company with the goal of really commercializing that vision of next generation human computer interface. So we started a company around five years ago based in Los Angeles. Uh, we really heads down our first few years of business, developing our core platform, which we call G-Speak. We were uh, doing some uh, large uh, projects sort of bespoke hardware software solutions for companies like the Boeing Company and Saudi Aramco. Today, we focus on building products around our G-Speak platform. The first product uh, we had a soft launch of last December. It's called Mezzanine. You'll be hearing more about that later. And we also continue to work with our customers <clears throat> developing products around our G-Speak uh, platform. So if you all were lucky enough to be here, uh, the early birds who were here at 9 AM to hear Jared Thorpe talk, you were, uh, <clears throat> you were sort of navigating the celestial heavens with, uh, with Jer, and it was really beautiful. So I'm going to take you now underground and we're going to roll this video. What we're going to be looking at here is a simulation of oil fields in the Middle East. And we're, my colleague there is able to gesturally interact with this massive data set. And he's also able to use different, uh, different ways of interacting with the data. So here he's editing an oil well, the position of an oil well gesturally. And here he's editing, if you can pause that just for a second, he's uh, editing that well on a table. Now, that's not a touch table. That's just a normal screen. But the intersection of where his hand is in space and that digital object is what's causing those, uh, those objects to move. You can finish now. <clears throat> so our customers are, uh, a lot of our customers have the, the requirement to kind of get into kind of the next generation visualization environments, but they also have legacy applications that they can't abandon that they need to integrate into sort of next generation visualization environments. So this next video that I'm going to show you, a little video, really showcases the um, kind of uh, plumbing level of the G-Speak platform. You can pause there just for a second. Um, <clears throat> the plumbing level of the G-Speak platform where, uh, that enables us to take legacy applications and plug those applications into this next generation visualization environment. Our customers call this the single pane of glass. So this is just a, a, a demo application. Uh, that's John. He's, um, it's 24 hours of FAA flight data. He's uh, uh, pulling in different, different elements, legacy application. That's a terminal application, a Java application, a Web 2.0 application. And all of those applications are connected into this visualization environment. And there's a bi-directional flow of data. So what he's doing in this sort of single pane of glass is being updated in those uh, legacy applications. Now, if we sort of take all of these ideas together and we add yet another element, which is the ability to <clears throat> create uh, easily configurable data lenses that you can superimpose over a geospatial uh, uh, platform, you get a very powerful tool for looking at data sets in new ways. Let's roll this video. So here we're, uh, uh, what we're seeing here, pause. Uh, what we're seeing here is we're, we've integrated legacy applications here, and we've brought down uh, a weather data lens. So we're looking here, I believe this is rainfall. Now, we can very easily, with um, a mobile device, either a phone or an iPad, change, uh, configure 
that lens to, to show something else. So let's say, let's say we're not interested in rainfall, but we're interested in heat or interested in wind speed. We can very easily configure that. And uh, we can roll video. So you can see that that's a live weather data. And now we're using the iPad to sort of change the, uh, the content of that data lens. You can pause here. Um, <clears throat> here, what we're doing is this is a map of downtown Los Angeles. And here we're showing kind of clearly the super, uh, superimposing these data lenses to get different kinds of insights from what we're looking at. We're also, um, which you, if you can just pause there for a second, the, uh, that's my colleague interacting with this space with what we call a spatial wand. So it's a wand that sort of understands where it is in space. There's tracking of the space. There's little bezels around the monitors in front of him that's tracking where he is in space. So it's a very intuitive way of uh, navigating through uh, large data sets. John has a, uh, a great quote that um, I always uh, think is important when thinking about kind of this large scale data visualization. And that is that there's no uh, visualization without navigation, that you just get a different kind of insight from the data if you're actually able to navigate around it and really be inside of it. <clears throat> so what we're looking at here, we're superimposing two different data lenses. One is the height of buildings in downtown Los Angeles, and the other is uh, available rental square footage in downtown Los Angeles. It's very important to us because we're actually looking for a new office space in downtown Los Angeles. So it's a tool we're actually using ourselves. All right. So now everything that I've shown you uh, has all been about geospatial visualization and kind of navigating the space in new and different ways. I think that's very appropriate because we're here at the WARE conference. But now let's think for a minute of removing the map and the globe and putting those pixels in the room around you. And we believe you come up with what we think is the blueprint for the meeting room for the post PC world. And we call it mezzanine. Let's run video. There's sound with this video. <clears throat> so what we're seeing here is a conference room. And in that conference room, people are able to bring sort of whatever tool they have with them, whether they're, they have their iPad or their mobile phone. And the, the whole room is spatially active. So there's a spatial wand. You're connecting in laptops. You're driving that laptop either from the laptop itself. Here we have a whiteboard. Can you pause here for a second? So here we have a whiteboard. And this is not a smart board. It's just a standard whiteboard. But because that whiteboard exists in this room, that is completely spatially active, we can take the spatial wand <clears throat> and point to it, click the button on the spatial wand, and that takes a photograph of that, uh, <clears throat> that whiteboard. If you can roll the video. So that's illustrated here. The gentleman uh, clicks a button, the whiteboard, and the whiteboard appears in this space. If we can pause for yet another minute. So, <clears throat> In the mezzanine room, you have a triptych in front of you. That's sort of your main work space. You have three different uh, work areas. You have <clears throat> kind of your assets on the top. You have a center uh, layer, which you can sort of bring all the way out to create kind of a presentation mode. And then you have live video streams coming in. You have different modes for the wand. Uh, you've seen it as a sort of a pointing device. Here we're also <clears throat> uh, we're in sort of snapshot mode here. So uh, the woman in the video is snapshotting a piece of uh, the image that came from the whiteboard. Let's roll video. And now that image, let's pause. That image, she uh, pulls from the, the triptych over to what we call a digital cork board. And so what she's doing there is she's changing the physical XYZ location of one image from one location to another location in the room, completely spatial. You can also uh, control the space with different devices. Here we see the uh, iPad, and roll video, controlling the space. There's a lot more information on Mezzanine on our website, if this is interesting to you. Here we're controlling the laptop through the spatial wand. So I'd encourage you, if, if that was interesting to you, to uh, head to the Oblong uh, website. Uh, so now, um, 
I started my talk by saying, <clears throat> by talking about the fact that at Oblong, our big, hairy, audacious goal is to change the way we all use computers. And what I've shown you today is all cool stuff, and it's all uh, aimed at the enterprise market. So you're sitting here thinking, OK, well, when do I get some of this special goodness in my life? And so I'm here to show you how we're going to do that. Um, we're going to focus on uh, two things that you rarely leave home without, your hands and your mobile phone. I know sometimes we do leave the house without our mobile phones, and then it's a, it's a disaster. Um, so we're going to do a live demo now. Uh, I have two colleagues with me from Oblong, Pete, who's a designer programmer extraordinaire, and Tom Armbrister, uh, head of system sales uh, for Oblong. And what you see here, we have a depth camera similar to what you'd find in a Microsoft Connect. And we're tracking hands and fingers. The fingers may not seem like a big deal, but it's actually big math to be able to track fingers. So let's go into the first demo. So this is, uh, we're sort of extending the functionality of your mobile phone. Here Tom is swiping using a typical swipe gesture that we're all familiar with. And that's controlling the images there on the kiosk. Now, Pete is going to take a picture of this uh, poster behind us. And that uh, he's connected uh, via Wi-Fi to this kiosk. And that picture is now in our kiosk. So he's clicking on it. And you can see the, uh, the image there. Now, let's go back out. We're going to go to <clears throat> the, yeah, the, um, so this is showing just uh, using uh, sort of rotation on the phone. And what we're doing is that we're tracking, uh, we're using accelerometer data to track the relative position of the phones in space. Um, again, these are just little demos to kind of give you a flavor of the kinds of things you can do when you have the uh, G-Speak platform and uh, devices. Let's move now to our beautiful snakes. So this is, uh, here we have two uh, beautiful snakes that are snaking along on the, on the screen. And so they're able to use the, their phone as kind of a smart pointing device. And, but I think what's important to, to realize is that uh, the system understands where, uh, where those phones are in space and what the intentionality is of the movement. So if Pete, for example, takes his uh, snake and if he moves it off screen, that snake is literally changing physical x, y, z location. We can't see it because there's no display surface here that's tracked in our system. But if, for example, that large projection screen were tracked in our system, he could throw that snake over to that uh, projection screen. So it's all about sort of these pixels in space. So I'm just about out of time. Uh, so I can't end a talk like this without uh, saying that we're hiring. So if you're interested in, uh, <laughs> if you're interested in uh, working for Oblong, please visit our website. Uh, if you're interested in getting in touch with me, there's my uh, um, email address. Um, I'd also like to say that uh, please come and see us. We're going to have this demo set up in the exhibitor area. Uh, we'll be having office hours over there, so if you want to come and play with this, I'd highly encourage you to come and, and check, check this out. Uh, I'd also like to say a big thank you to uh, the Oblong folks who've helped uh, put this together. Uh, Pete Hawks, who's been a terrific help, Kyle, Miguel, Zai, Tobias, and David all contributed to uh, making this live demo happen. So thank you, team, and thank you, audience.